see what happened on his way towards Tabuk to fight the Romans, somebody caused a rumor. Somebody said, Rasulullah and Ali ibn Abi Talib, it seems their relationship has a problem. So Rasulullah looked at him and said, why? He said, Ali ibn Abi Talib has not come with you. Rasulullah had said to him there and then, Oh you, listen to me. Ali is to me like Harun was to Musa. What happened was he left Ali ibn Abi Talib in Medina. Why? Because the only man who could look after Medina when Rasulullah was not in it was Ali ibn Abi Talib. Please understand this very delicate point. It's more important than Ghadir. Why? Because ninth year of Hijrah, one year before Ghadir, don't jump straight to Ghadir. Already one year before, Rasulullah is showing the people that when I get out of Medina, only Ali ibn Abi Talib can control Medina. So he left him in Medina to control all of the affairs. Now somebody may say this. Somebody may say, okay, Rasulullah left Imam Ali in Medina. Musa left Harun. It doesn't mean Imam Ali will be the successor to Rasulullah after him. Rasulullah just left him for a short period and that's it. It would be the case had Rasulullah not said, Ali is to me like Aaron was to Moses on five other occasions. He didn't just say it in this time. He said it on five other occasions. Do you know why? Because Rasulullah knew that one day somebody would say, okay, Ali is to me like Harun to Musa, means that for a short period, Ali is my Khalifa, that's it. No, he said it on many other occasions. For example, one day he was in the house of Umm Salim. Umm Salim is the mother of Anas ibn Malik. Anas ibn Malik, the famous narrator of Hadith. His mother is Umm Salim. One day Rasulullah was in the house of Umm Salim. What did Rasulullah say? He said, Ali, your flesh is my flesh and your blood is my blood and you are to me like Harun is to Musa. Number one. Number two, one day Rasulullah was with Abu Bakr and with Umar and with Abu Ubaidah Jarrah. They were all standing next to each other. Rasulullah patted the back of Ali ibn Abi Talib. He said to him, Oh Ali, you were the first Muslim and the strongest of all of them, and you are to me like Harun was to Musa. Number two. Number three, in Mecca, when Rasulullah did a brotherhood between all the companions, each companion had a brother, Abu Bakr had Umar, every other companion had a brother, Rasulullah made the brotherhood with Imam Ali. And what did he say? He said, Ali, you are to me like Harun is to Musa. Then when Rasulullah reached Medina, five months after Hijrah, he called everybody again. The first brotherhood was in Mecca. The second brotherhood was in Medina. When he reached Medina, he called everybody again. He said to them, oh people, watch. All of you are now brothers. Ali had no brother. Rasulullah called him. He said to him, Ali, come here. Oh Ali, you are to me like Harun. It's true. Musa. On another occasion, Hamza's daughter, Hamza, uncle of Rasulullah, Hamza died. They were debating who should look after the daughter of Hamza now that she has died. Ja'far was there, Zayd was there, Imam Ali was there. Rasulullah called Imam Ali. He said to him, Oh Ali, you are to me like Harun is to Musa. On another occasion, please look at how many occasions. You know why? Because if you don't know all of these occasions, then somebody will say to you, Yes, Ali to Muhammad is like Harun to Musa, meaning in the same way Harun was only a deputy for a number of days, Ali was a deputy for a number of days. One day, Rasulullah, Allah told him, all the doors of the mosque will be closed except the door of you and Fatima. Do you know why? Because the companions in those days, their doors, when you open the door, many of you here have been to Masjid al-Nabawi in Medina. Masjid al-Nabawi, you've seen where the grave of Rasulullah is in Masjid al-Nabawi. When in those days, when the companions would open the door of their houses, the back door would enter into Masjid al-Nabawi. Now some of these guys, he hasn't done ghusl that morning. He enters straight into Masjid al-Nabawi. Rasulullah received a command from Allah. Every door has to be closed except the door of Ali and Fatima. Why? 
Because he said, Ali ibn Abi Talib is like me, he is purified. Some people got jealous. They started to say, Rasulullah loves Ali ibn Abi Talib. Of course, he loves him because he's his cousin. Rasulullah stood up on the minbar. Listen to what he said. He stood up on the minbar. He came out. He said, Oh people, I've heard some people are jealous of me and Ali. He said, Oh people, Allah ordered Musa and Harun to make their house a qibla in Egypt. The house of Ali and Fatima is a qibla for the Muslims because Ali is to me like Harun was to Musa. The only difference at Tabuk is what? Listen to this vital point. The only difference at Tabuk was Rasulullah added something. He said, Ali is to me like Harun is to Musa, except that there is no prophet after me. Meaning what? Meaning I know I'm going to die in one year. Ghadir is one year away. I know I'm going to die. So the best thing for me to do in my final year of my life is to give the people many indications about Ali ibn Abi Talib succeeding me. So he said, Ali is to me like Harun is to Musa, except there's no prophet after me, which means except he is only an Imam, a prophethood has now ended. Tabuk finished, Rasulullah returned, then Surah 9 of the Quran was revealed. Surah 9 is called Surah At-Tawbah. It's the only Surah in the Quran which does not begin with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Every Surah in the Quran begins Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The only Surah in the Quran which doesn't begin Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is Surah At-Tawbah. Rasulullah sent Abu Bakr to go towards Mecca. It was the time of Hajj. But Hajj in that time, the Mushrikeen and the Muslims would be at Hajj. Rasulullah still had not done Hajj. Rasulullah only done one Hajj in his life. Rasulullah had not done Hajj. Rasulullah sent Abu Bakr. He said, Abu Bakr, go towards Mecca and tell everybody that from next year, no mushrik can be around the Kaaba in this time. Abu Bakr left. After one day of leaving, Allah sent Jibra'il to Imam Ali. He came to Imam Ali. Uh, to Rasulullah, he came to Rasulullah and said, Ya Rasulullah, tell Abu Bakr to come because Ali ibn Abi Talib has to take over the message. Why? Why? Listen to what the exact words are. Jibra'il said to Rasulullah, Oh Rasulullah, either you have to go or somebody who is yourself. Either you or somebody who is yourself. Rasulullah, what did he do? He said, Ali, get up. What do you want Rasulullah? What can I help you with? Go quickly, tell Abu Bakr that you are the one who has to reveal this surah to the Meccans. Imagine how the jealousy starts growing now. He goes, he takes surah number 9 of the Quran. He goes and tells the Meccans, oh Meccans, next year, because in those days they used to do tawaf naked. The Meccans, in their hajj, they would do naked, tawaf naked. Ali ibn Abi Talib came, said next year there is no naked tawaf and there is no idols anymore. There is no mushriks in this vicinity. Ali ibn Abi Talib returned. The first Khalifa was not happy that he was told to go and then he was told he is not the one who will reveal the message. In the 10th year of Hijrah, this is all when in the 10th year of Hijrah now we enter. We are reaching the last days of the life of Rasulullah. Rasulullah, the final expedition, the final war that he sent, he sent Ali ibn Abi Talib to Yemen. Where? To Yemen. Ali ibn Abi Talib did not go to Hajj with Rasulullah. Please listen to what I'm saying and understand what we are saying. Rasulullah sent Ali ibn Abi Talib to Yemen. Why? Before Ali ibn Abi Talib had gone to Yemen, Rasulullah sent Khalid ibn al-Walid. Why? Because in Yemen there was two big tribes, Hamadan and Madhaj. These were two big tribes. Rasulullah wanted them either to convert or to pay the tax. He sent Khalid ibn Walid in the eighth year of Hijrah. Khalid ibn Walid went, he got there, he made a mess of things. He didn't convert anybody. Rasulullah called Ali ibn Abi Talib. He said, Ali, 
I want you to go to Yemen. Why? I want you to convert the tribes of Madhaj and Hamadan. Go towards them and convert them. Ali ibn Abi Talib went towards Yemen. When he went there, at the beginning, Madhaj were not receptive to him. They started pelting him with stones. This is before Ghadir. They started pelting him with stones. He had an army alongside him. This army, he used them. They managed to overcome the opposition. When they managed to overcome the opposition, they managed to collect the spoils of war from the opposition. In the 10th year of Hijrah, at exactly the same time that Ali ibn Abi Talib is in Yemen, Rasulullah told all the Muslims, I am now going on my first and only Hajj. The only Hajj Rasulullah went on was one. Some people think Rasulullah has been to 10 Hajj or he's been. No. Rasulullah done Umrah twice. Seventh year of Hijrah and the eighth year of Hijrah, he done Umrah. Then in the 10th year of Hijrah, Hijra, he told everybody, we are now going towards Hajj. Suddenly everybody got ready. A hundred thousand Muslims had heard Rasulullah is now finally going to do Hajj. He had never done Hajj before. He had only done Umrah and not Hajj. Rasulullah told everybody and he left Medina. Where was Ali ibn Abi Talib, brothers and sisters? He's in Yemen. He wasn't with Rasulullah. Rasulullah is in Medina. Ali ibn Abi Talib is in Yemen. Rasulullah now tells everybody we have to go towards Hajj. They start going towards Hajj on the 25th of Dil Qa'dah. Rasulullah left Medina. He left Abu Dajan al Ansari as the governor of Medina. He left. What did he do? Many of you who've been to Hajj will know what I'm talking about. First thing he did, he took with him 60 sheep. For the sacrifice. Then he went to Masjid al Shajara. Masjid al Shajara. Hujjaj, you remember Masjid al Shajara? When he went to Masjid al Shajara, he went there, he put on the ihram. Why was he doing all this? He's teaching the Muslims how to do Hajj. He put on the ihram, and then he said, Labbaik Allahumma, Labbaik. He started going towards the journey. All the Muslims started following him towards Mecca. He entered Mecca on the 4th of Dil Hijjah. Ali ibn Abi Talib was still coming back from Yemen. He entered on the 4th of Dil Hijjah. On the 8th of Dil Hijjah, Rasulullah began the Hajj ceremony. When? On the 8th of Dil Hijjah. What did he do? He began his tawaf. He done his sa'i, safa and marwa. He done everything. When he had done everything, he said something to his companions. He said to them, my companions, if any of you have come with animals, if you've come with animals, you remain in the state of ihram. If you have not come with animals, go and take off your ihram and then wear it again for hajj. What do we call it? Umrat al-tamattu, hajj al-tamattu. There is a difference. There is a period where you're allowed to go and take off your ihram and then you make the ihram, the niyyah for hajj. He said to them, those of you, those of you, who have an animal with you, go. Those of you who, don't, uh, who have an animal with you, then you stay with me. If you don't have an animal for sacrifice, then go and wear the ihram again with the knee of hajj. There was one person, you all know his name, I don't need to mention him from the member. Why? Why? Why should we take it off? He said to him, you have to take it off. You don't have an animal with you. He said, if you don't take it off, I don't take it off. I, I, I wonder about those people who seek to defend him, who are Shia. They're the ones I worry about, not... Yeah, it's the Shia ones who try to defend him every day. You might as well compromise everything. So what happened was, he said to Rasulullah, I said, why? Why should I? So Rasulullah said, you will stick like this until the end of your life. He did. Until the end of his life, he said, nobody's allowed to change into a haram for the 